Hey everybody, Lee Lonitz here. I am with my bestie, Betty Kaufman, and we're here for, I wish you all a happy Thursday, and to do our Facebook Live video, our first joint one together, and Betty, you can tell she's, I'm excited, and I'm Betty's, excited. Betty's really excited. We've been talking about doing this for a few weeks, and we're so excited to be together to do this joint session for you to talk about wine and social media on Thursday. Thirsty Thursday, right? If I remember correctly. You are right. Is it every Thursday a Thirsty Thursday? It is. It is. Right there. So um, I'm just going to quickly share this over to my personal Facebook page because I know some people are looking for this video um, on my uh, Facebook page. So I'll go ahead and share it so you know where all will know where to find me, find us. Okay, and we're all set right there. And if anybody has any questions, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll be able to see them coming through there. So, alrighty. So, uh, for those of you who uh, I've never met before, my name is Lee Lonitz. I am a social media strategist, uh, consultant, speaker, uh, a ghost writer for a number of my clients, and I'm also the owner of a web design company called Design Foresight that's been in business now for nine years. Um, what I do is I help businesses uh, attract audiences, boost their brand visibility, and grow their connections and their conversions uh, by providing them effective social media marketing solutions. I work with a lot of people, mostly in the Bay Area, but I do work with businesses beyond the Bay Area. And uh, I do this through social media consulting, coaching, uh, I do uh, seminars, I uh, teach workshops, and I even do some uh, writing as a ghost author for some clients, including Betty right here, and she can tell you more about that later if we have time. Um, so if you are a business owner and you've got the jitters using Twitter or you are making a fuss over Google+, uh, if you're all over the place with a book of face or you really give a damn about using Instagram, then I want to talk to you. So you'll get my uh, information later on. So without further ado, um, today we're going to be talking about wine and social media. And in particular, now that, um, you know, now that summer is the first official week of summer, uh, just a couple of days ago, and uh, you know, if spring, the season of spring itself doesn't do it, summer is usually the time when many of us emerge from our indoor dwellings and we get outside, we get active, um, we go and uh, go to the beaches and we get active outdoors and we also wind up eating more outdoors. And uh, thus, the you know thus the common um, backyard barbecue uh, pat um, you know patio parties. So um, and when people are having those parties in their backyards or in their picnics, you know people are chilling a cold one. They are breaking open a uh, a brewski or they are busting out the bubbly. And so I was hoping that you could talk to us a little bit today about some summer wine tips and summer wines that you recommend. Uh, for our audience here. I would love to. So, you know, the bottom line with summer wine enjoyment well, why don't is... you introduce yourself first? Oh, okay. <laughs> I will. But I'm... you need no introduction, though. She, this is somebody that mm -hmm. she needs no introduction. I do. I'm Betty Kaufman, and I am a wine consultant with a wonderful Napa winery called Wine Shop at Home. And what is unique about Wine Shop at Home is they don't sell their wines retail or wholesale. They sell their wines through people like me who lead in-home wine tastings and in-office wine tastings for groups of people like you. Um, and the neat thing about Wine Shop at Home is it's a tiny winery that produces a lot of wine. So at any point, they usually have 20, 25 wines available to try in an in-home tasting. Now, of course, at an in-home tasting, we don't try 20 wines because... That would not be good. We'd try six wines. But 20 anyway, wines would be a lot of yeah, wine. Yeah, that would be a lot, lot of wine. That'd be um, one big party. But so today, I thought I would introduce Lee and me and you to two incredible wines for the summer. And, and when I think about summer wines, I think keep it simple, keep it refreshing, and uh, don't overthink it because, oh my God, summer is about relaxing. You want to have fun. So we're going to do a white and we're going to do a red. And we're going to start with a muscat. And when you think of muscat, you. you think of a flower bouquet. It kind of evokes. It, you just 
get a total floral bouquet as you smell it, as you taste it. So we're going to go through the steps of wine tasting, because wine tasting is all about waking up your senses. So step number one, we look at the wine, we see the wine, we look at the color, and look at Lee part. and I, we are both <laughs> holding our arms up, because you want to be dramatic as you're seeing your wine. Second, we smell the wine. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, it smells Third, very Third, cool. Third, we swirl the wine, and here what we're doing is we're aerating it. We're bringing the aromas to the surface, we're letting the oxygen just get all over that wine to really open it up. And now we're going to smell it again, and you'll probably notice that it really blossomed. Ooh. And now for our favorite part, we get to sip it. And when you sip it, you put a big amount of wine in your mouth, move the wine all around your mouth so that you coat your entire mouth before swallowing. And I should have said cheers. I forgot the cheers, so we have to do Let's this do again. it a little better. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. I love the clang right there. Is Me that, too. Is there a difference between uh, glasses that clang and classes that, that classes? Gla I, you know, I only have one sip of wine. <laughs> glasses. <laughs> glasses. Glasses that, is there a difference in, in the sound of the glasses? Well, um. I know it's off topic, but. Better I, glasses uh, tend to cling better. And we actually, these are wine glasses that Wine Shop at Home sells from a fabulous, Italian vendor who shock toughens their stems so that you really can be quite enthusiastic when you click. When you click, and importantly, when you click, hold your stem on the stem. If you hold it up here and you click, you don't get that pretty sound. No, so it doesn't sound very pretty. Okay, so what we love about this wine for the summer is it just evokes refreshing summer. It's you know. Lots and lots of floral tastes, um, just real light and refreshing. And we serve it very, very cold because obviously you want to chill out on 90 degree days. Oh, definitely. Um, Summer is all about chilling out. Thank you. Yes, it is. And, and, the, it's hot. and, and this wine um, goes with so many different foods. Certainly it goes with dessert because it's a slightly sweeter wine. But it goes beautifully with pizza. Yeah, I'm going to actually which have, Lee is gonna show have us. this cheese pizza, a slice of cheese pizza right here that Betty made for us right there. I don't normally don't take cheese pizza, but this cheese, uh, cheese pizza is the bomb. It's the bomb. It's from Trader Joe's. Thank you, Trader <laughs> Joe's. But anyway. Well, now the secret's out. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a wine and pizza pairing. Exactly. I'm going to do that Good. right there. Okay. But, but I'm going to tell you, this wine goes well with a lot of your lighter mm. summer dishes salads, um, fish dishes, um, pastas, and, and, and as I said before, desserts. Mm. So anyway, enjoy. And we're going to drink this so that then we can drink our mm, red wine, which I like even better than this one. That was really good. That, that piece of pizza, you know, thank you. That just okay, brought me back I better to try childhood. it too. <laughs> mm. Mm. You know, um, what uh, this white wine also would go good with is, I've been thinking fruit, like oh, summer yeah. fruit, because everybody, you oh, know, you, like watermelon, totally. uh, cantaloupe, strawberries, you know, we're all like, you know, totally. basically totally. busting up the fruit. I completely agree with you. And there's, you know, I can taste the fruit in here. I'm tasting uh, apricot. Okay. That's, that, that's okay. what comes to my I mind. I love it. That's, I love it. No, I know that's not very florally, but. No, no. I mean. When I say Muscat is known for its floral notes, it doesn't mean it's not known for other notes. A, little, a, a fun little factoid about Muscat is they believe that Muscat is the oldest grape that was ever made into wine. They believe that cave people turned Muscat into wine. No, stop, because we gotta drink the, we got to drink the red wine, my well, dear. Well, actually, I, I need a little more to go with the pizza right here. But I got wanted to, it, I wanted got to, it. Actually, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead and finish your sentence. No, no. So, anyway, the wine is so floral, and they say that the grape, as it's growing, is equally floral, so they believe that cave people saw this amazingly aromatic grape and decided we need to do something with it. Maybe we need to stomp it and ferment it. <laughs> so they believe that Muscat is the parent grape of all the other wines we drank today, from Cabernet to Chardonnay to Zinfandel, everything, they believe, is a child That's, of Muscat. That, that is, you know, that is amazing right there. So, so 
Fred Flintstone could have conceivably had I think some he of the did. first wine. I think he did. And do you think when he drank it, do you think he said, must get Susie, must get Sam, or did he say, must get Susie, must get Sam? I think he must have said something like, must get Abadoo, or... <laughs> Oh, right, my oh my god. <laughs> Where am I? Okay. That is so, so funny. Speaking of going back, actually, um, Instagram. Uh, you and I started Instagram not too long ago. And um, did you know that Instagram actually now is up to 500 million users? Is that amazing? Okay, so so that that allows me to do a call out to do you, I mean, Do you remember, I mean, do you remember yeah. when, when Facebook... Like maybe a year or two ago, was at five hundred million. Yeah, people, yeah. You know, and now Instagram is there. Yeah, you know, and they, back then the whole social media race between Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Google it was like a horse race, you know. And people were watching as Facebook just slowly edged its way ahead of its competition up to five hundred million. And it makes you and it made people made people think like, wow, you know, where is this social network going to go? So you know, we look at Instagram now, which is the the baby brother or the child, if you will of uh, Facebook, Facebook since it bought it out and you have to wonder the, where Instagram is going to go in terms of overall users. Right, right. I do want to do a huge shout out to Lee. Lee is my social media guru and I just can't speak highly enough about his expertise and his ability to lead people like me through the wending paths of social media. Um, he got me on Facebook some six years ago, I'm going to say, and um, I have well over 3,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he, he got me on all of the social media platforms. Twitter is the one that I was the most hesitant about. So I said to him, Lee, I will do Twitter if you will be my Twitterati. So he helps me with Twitter and it's unbelievable. And while I'm waiting for Lee to finish his white wine, what I'm going to say is, why do I love social media so much? Um, wine to me is all about building community and having fun. And being social. And being social. And I see social media being identical. Because wine is social. Because wine is social. I am building community with social media and, and it, I can't tell you how fun it is. And, and I really have to take my hat off to Lee mm. for kind of being, having such an understanding of how important this whole social media area is, and then helping people like me forge a path and, and really have a lot of success. So thank you for oh, that. Well, thank you. It's, it's, it's always a pleasure and it's fun to work with you as well, to be able to actually get right in there and tweet for you about uh, popular wine topics, uh, and then just and, and actually use your voice as well. I've done this. Okay, that is the scary thing. When you know, I do some tweeting and he does more tweeting for me. You can't tell the difference between our voices. We sound alike. We're kind of like you know twins separated at birth, but we're not. But anyway, I know I actually know enough of Betty's vocabulary to actually come in there and basically. <laughs> whoops. Ah. Oh, there it goes. Camera. Sorry, we, we lost our camera. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. And basically to get in there and to... I apologize for that. No. Okay. There we go. Okay. Right there. So, um, so yeah, basically um, I get in her voice. So it's, be, it's actually good to be able... It's, it's fun to actually um, put... Why words in your <laughs> to put wine in my mouth? Wine, well, wine okay, in your in mouth. That's words. right, right there. Okay, so okay. now, okay, Lee is still finishing up his white wine, but I've poured myself the red wine. This red wine is our Milano Cellars Dolcetto, and the story behind Dolcetto is an amazing one. Dolcetto is originally from northern Italy. It thankfully made its way to California in the late 1800s, there are only 10 vineyards that grow Dolcetto in California and only about 10 wineries that make Dolcetto in California and happily Wine Shop at Home is one of those wineries. What makes Dolcetto so fabulous and especially so fabulous for summer? It's a red wine that you serve slightly chilled. Woo, woo, woo. It's a red wine 
that tastes like a berry party in your mouth. Think blueberry, strawberry, raspberry, cranberry, blackberry. Truly, it's berry party in your mouth. I like to think of it as adult Hawaiian punch. Pretty stunning, and I think, my dear, it's yeah, time for you up. to have. <laughs> I'd like to see that too, so fill her up. <laughs> yeah, um, so we gotta do our. our so we see. see so first see we with see the, arm the line. Out. Now right we smell there. it. Now we smell it. Oh, ah, but now we, now we swirl, swirl it. it. And then we take another big sniff. And let's smell it again. Oh, ah. And now we sip it. <laughs> And, and another thing I like mm. to think about is, it's kind of like port without the heavy alcohol. Because this is normal wine, but it kind of tastes like port. It's, it's pretty much to die for. And this wine, honest to God, is good with everything. It's good with chocolate. It's good with pizza. It's good with pasta. Oh, you know, since you said that. I'm yeah. Have... It's good with a good day. It's good with a bad day. It is good. And the saddest thing about this wine is it sells out faster than any other wine we have. So if you are interested in learning about Dolcetto, get in touch with me and I'll make sure you get to try some. <clears throat> this is really good. It's very sweet. Um, well, interestingly, it's a little bit sweet. It's more fruity than anything else. It's just, it's a fruit bomb. Mm -hmm, it's mm. very fruity. Well, yeah, you know, I, you were saying, you were talking about, you know, it like being an adult Hawaiian punch mm -hmm. and I just went I think there's a I think there's a Lou Wow going on in my mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. What about like um I don't know like in terms of summer foods uh I'm thinking like besides dessert like chocolate for example like chocolate cakes you know can you can you imagine this maybe steaks for example with cocoa steaks at all or would you like refrain from that would you find something else that like people summer barbecues and picnics so, to go with this? So there's a lovely man named Tim Hanai who is one of 300 people who has ever been awarded the Master of Wine designation, which essentially is like a PhD in wine. Mm -hmm. um, Tim says, excuse me while my cell phone is ringing in the background, you can ignore that. Um, Tim says... Yeah, there goes some Bob Marley back there. Yeah, there's some Bob Marley that's very summerish. Tim says... I think don't, I want some wine. Don't care about... Who says this goes with that and this goes with that? If you like a wine and you like a food, they go together. So, you know, <clears throat> forget about the rules. If you like a steak and you like this wine, put them together. Would, would I say, oh, that is an absolutely perfect match? No, but if you love it, it's perfect. You know, and that's what I love about your wine tasting. When I first um, learned about how to drink wine from you, uh, I initially had these preconceptions of like, oh, you know, you you, you got to watch out for um, the tannins, you know, or you got to monitor the acid, you know. And you're supposed to know all of these erudite terms, and then it's like you taught you taught me, and all the people I ever brought to a wine tasting to you that basically wine is just simply a fun thing. You're just supposed to enjoy it, have fun, and whatever tastes good tastes good, you know. And, and I if think, you like it, it's a good wine. If you don't like it, for you, you it's not a good wine. <clears throat> um, it, I, I like to start a lot of my tastings where, where I can sense that people are intimidated by wine. I start by saying, guys, we are drinking fermented grape juice. Can you handle that? Okay, let's get started. And who doesn't like grape juice? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you guys, I have so enjoyed tasting wine with you, and I hope that you've been drinking wine as we've been talking about and drinking wine. Well, we got some whistle that I drink a little bit more right here. You haven't even touched your, you barely touched your pizza right there. I know, I know, I know. I know. You know, actually, while we're, um, while you're checking that right over there. So, we talked a little bit about Instagram. Um, Facebook. Facebook live video, which is what we're doing right now. Um, when it comes to Facebook live video, it's, you know, doing live streaming video is not a brand new technology. I'm going to move this over here a little bit. Oh, yeah, move it's not a brand way. new technology, but the fact that Facebook's doing it is actually becoming a very popular, all the rage type of feature on Facebook. And you'll notice that more people are actually doing live videos. If you just look at your Facebook 
stream every day, like on your phone, I'm seeing more and more people doing live, actual live streaming videos. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. actually really fun to watch. Uh, people have these different ideas about uh, videos that really take you right there. I've seen people doing live videos of just like the landscape of like beach, you know. I saw you doing one at a restaurant. I did do one at a restaurant right there. Um, also, what I really love is uh, IHOP. Have you ever seen IHOP's uh, famous Paradise, I think it's called Paradise Pancakes. <laughs> yes, right yes, Paradise. yes, yes. I love that. So basically, it's just, for those who don't know, IHOP has this awesome Facebook Live video they do every, I think it's every Thursday or every day uh, so during a certain hour, and they put this stack of pancakes right there on the picnic table. And then in the background, there's just this beach scene. Um, I haven't figured out if it's actually, hey, it's it's Vince right there. Say hi to Vince right there. Hey, Vince! He finally, he's online right Yay, there. Hey, Vince! Woohoo! So, so, um, so basically, they have a, um, a video, a Facebook Live video, where they have a beach in the background. And believe it or not, I actually saw 200 people log on and watch the Facebook Live video. Just, you know, and people were like commenting more about the beach scene, if anything, than the pancakes. And are wondering, like, is anybody going to turn the pancakes? Is anybody going to eat the pancakes? That is adorable. That is There's adorable. There's also another cool Facebook Live video um, from a, uh, a page called Dog Bless You. So, and Dog Bless You is, uh, it's a, it's a canine, it's a dog, um, a dog sanctuary, dog rescue foundation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And every day in the morning, about nine or 10 o'clock, which is typically not the time when you want to do a Facebook live video, watch it because it completely distracts you. When I see like cute animals on the screen, I'm just like, I'm, you know, and I'm at work, I'm like gone. But basically they will do a live Facebook live video of the doggies that are inside of their care in their caretaking area it. and it's so cute it's just so cool to just sit there and watch you know and uh and so basically well yeah i know i'm so sorry you couldn't see this until a minute ago right there i actually had to post the link to my facebook page my personal facebook page oh, so we're really? coming off of the business page right oh, now shoot vince oh no, but I mean... thank you for thank you for letting us know so um that's actually good to know i think in it's the future, a learning experience it's yeah you know it's still it's all a learning experience um so uh, there's, there's no limit to the number, to the amount of creative ideas that you can do with Facebook Live. And why do Facebook Live? So basically, it's, as you can kind of guess, it's kind of like a take you there type of, of video. Um, statistics show right now that people um, on Facebook are actually watching videos way more than looking at photos. It used to be that photos were the dominant type of content that people would stop and look at on Facebook. But now it's all about the videos. And what's very interesting is that um, Facebook has said that people are actually watching live videos three times as much as recorded videos. Interesting. Which is Interesting. Which totally blows my mind, you know. And I mean, of course, people want to feel like, the, you know, they're, they're live, like they're right there. You can be taken to, like recently, my spouse and I, for example, we actually watched, we tried to watch a, uh, a live video of, you remember the Riviera, the Riviera Hotel Casino in Las Vegas? That got trashed. Yeah, it actually mm -hmm. just got go away. Kaboom! Mm -hmm. Like about a week or two ago mm -hmm. right there. Um, at midnight or so, that one night, I don't know if you saw it, but they actually had somebody, one of the news stations was actually uh, broadcasting a Facebook live of the the demolition the explosions right there and unfortunately the the connection the wi-fi connection was kind of oh, shot right oh, that's there. too bad so um this is the dolcetto right i know i haven't drinking that much right there but we'll do a cheer hey, no you got chairs for me mm -hmm. right there i love that clang mm. so there's the wine right there you have you have cats around here somewhere right okay you, you talk and I'll find a kitty cat. Okay, do we have kitty cats in the house right there? Let's see if we have a kitty cats in the house. <laughs> I know my family loves kitty cats. So, anyways, why Facebook Live? So, like as I kind of alluded to before, Facebook Live, um, the live stream broadcast uh, feature within Facebook brings your audience right there where they sometimes or often can't be. It's they make you make them feel like they're you're they're part of this immersive experience. So I'm encouraging everybody to actually try a Facebook Live if you've never tried it before. So some of the tips that I would recommend if you are, if you haven't done a Facebook Live before, or maybe you've done a Facebook Live and you're just kind of getting your feet uh, dirty with it, um, there are three three main things that you want to watch out for when it comes to a Facebook doing your own Facebook Live video. First is uh, the lighting. You want to make sure that you have enough lighting in your room so that you're not obscuring your face or it's not too dark because, you know, you ain't filming no Ghostbusters, you know, episode. And so, oh, look at this. 
What's this? What's this? Here's Bean. Oh, oh my yeah, God. so cute. Here's Bean. She's not very happy to be here because I Hi, interrupted her nap. Are you going to be a part of the talk today? Look at that. And you yeah. feel she was she taking a nap? Oh, look at that. Miss Bandy. Right there. She she has her claws out. No, no, no. That's not out. That's not out. <laughs> no, sorry. You want some wine? Oh, you're uh, kitty. And there goes the kitty. There goes the kitty. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> kitty. So... I was just telling our audience right here that uh, three tips that they want to remember when it comes to doing their first Facebook Live video or um, boosting their Facebook Live video, making it better. One is the lighting. You want to have, like we checked out already, you want to have good, solid lighting. Think like a photographer, you know. Uh, do your videos maybe early in the morning or in the late afternoon when the sun actually blemishes on your skin. So I'm very, I'm very strategic about this, as you can tell. Um, you want to make sure it's not too much lighting and not... They're not too dark as well because people will notice that. Secondly, besides the lighting, is the sound. Now, the sound is the fun part. Um, you want to make sure that you have a private space where it's quiet enough where you don't drown the sound of your own voice out. So if you can do a Facebook Live video inside of, say, like a private room, like in your home, your living room, home office, or quiet alcove like this, or if you're doing a Facebook Live video at work, um, maybe, you know, closing the door to your office because then you have people have people walking in and out. Facebook live video is awesome when you can actually hear your voice. Now, if you, it's not always possible to do a Facebook live video uh, in the quiet. So if you're out in public and you're trying to do a Facebook live video, you want to do what I do. I usually keep the camera very close to me with maybe with about a foot of my voice. And that way the microphone on the camera actually picks it up. I have a funny story to tell you. My spouse and I, we went out three weeks ago to a uh, there you go. We are, sorry about the disconnect there. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a second because that's another key right there. So we actually went to this crepes shop and um, we filmed the seven minute Facebook live video. And in wow. the end, when we played it back, um, it was like a silent movie. It was like this. Oh, no. Oh, well, no. no. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, it was more like that. Okay, now you can talk. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it was like no. that, seven minutes. And then what happened was I realized that the volume, the, the microphone volume on my phone was all the way down so it's as as insane as that sounds I usually tell people in addition to making sure that you can actually hear your voice on your phone also make sure that your microphone volume is all the way up it's stupid but just do it because you'll, you'll save yourself the seven minutes or you never get back um, so lighting sound and then also the third thing is the speed the connection this sounds like a like a thunderstorm or something like light lighting sound and speed so you want to always double check the speed of your connection when you're doing a facebook live video so for example before i got here to betty's betty's place um, i actually ran a speed test i use a website called speedtest.net and i double check the upload speed to make sure that it's a decent speed so what's a decent speed probably i would say about five megabytes per second that's sufficient based on um what i've learned so you want to make sure you have a decent upload speed because you know if you've ever watched the facebook live video before and you've seen it kind of cut in and cut out and you've seen like one or two of my videos do that it's pretty frustrating nobody wants to sit there right, and right. like and then wait like and then right. and then click and wait like is it my is it me or is it you yeah so always double check the speed of your wi-fi connection or your phone connection your network connection before you do a a live facebook live video and again you can go to websites like speedtest.net to try and check that out five megabytes per second is probably a decent speed going upstream to check that so um some other tips as well um is uh be yourself be yourself i mean that's what facebook live is all about now, I meant like, admittedly, I did rehearse a few of the lines that I have here today, you know, so I actually had no something to talk about. And of course, Betty, I'm sure, I'm sure you did the same as well. But at the same time, you know, what is Facebook Live if it's not live? It's not Facebook rehearsed. So um, be yourself when you're on the camera. And speaking of being yourself on the camera, my fifth tip, probably one of my most important Facebook Live tips is... Um, don't do anything stupid on Facebook Live that you wouldn't want, like, say, like, to be put in jail for. Uh, oh, why not, Lee? <laughs> well, if you've watched the world news, you notice certain things have been happening. Say, in Europe, for example, they've been caught on Facebook Live that, you know, obviously it's, they're travesties. But back here at home, I've actually started to see people doing silly, inane, and sometimes really, really dumb things on Facebook Live because they, you have an audience now. You have a live audience now. I've seen people driving and doing Facebook Live at the same time. I mean, it's bad enough 
that if you're doing like Facebook texting and driving, I mean, if you're doing texting and driving, but to do a live stream yeah, video yeah, while you're driving, that's terrible. Just, just don't do it, people. I mean, just don't, don't, don't do it. Um, you know, don't, don't, you don't have to do jackass style. You remember the show Jackass, right? Don't do, don't have to do jackass style video, Facebook live videos in order to get notoriety. It's just not worth it because you can bet, bet like a year from now. Um, the all the police, you know, the law enforcement, they're going to be looking more closely at yeah, this technology yeah. and saying, okay, who can we like kind of watch in the background, see what they're doing. So, Lee, if I want to do my very first Facebook Live video, what do I do? What do I do? Um, first thing is remember that the fifth thing is remember is um, my new phrase is friends don't let friends do dumb things on Facebook Live. Right there. Okay. okay. That's now. That's the that's, okay. Now that's but like thing. okay. So I'm loving this. So I want to do my own tomorrow. How do I do it? So um, right now, everybody has the ability to do Facebook Live, or most everybody should within your Facebook app. Whether you're using an iPhone or whether you're using an Android, all you have to do is go to your personal profile on Facebook, or you can go to your business profile page if you want to do this out of your business, which is what I'm doing. What we're doing right now. Um, because this is more business related, but if I wanted to do just in a personal Facebook Live video, then I'd go to my personal Facebook. So you go to your you, on your app, you open up your first your your Facebook app, and then you go to your personal Facebook profile, and then where the status bar is, you'll see um, you just click on the status the status field, and then a menu will drop down, and you have this little icon that has like these little radio waves above it, little head radio waves above it. That's the new icon for the Facebook Live. So you just click on that guy, and then you can be live instantaneously in like five seconds. All you got to do is type wow. up a title, a snazzy title, and then you you click on go live, and then um, it'll give you five seconds to get ready, and then you're you're on the air. So and wow. that's that's the time where also you want to make sure that you got some speed. So if you've got the connection speed on your Facebook profile, if if your phone app says you've got the speed to do your Facebook live, you'll see that go live button when you press it go blue. Now, it, it, otherwise, if you don't have the speed, it's going to be grayed out. So that's where you want to do your, again, do your speed checks. You know, make sure if you're using a home Wi-Fi system or an office Wi-Fi system, make sure that that, blue, that button that says go live, when you hit the, the live button, goes blue right there. Otherwise, you should probably find another connection to connect to. Wow, that's Was awesome. that simple or was that? That was, that was awesome. the long or the short. No, you guys, I more love pizza, it. I, I love it. Finish your cheese pizza. We have more downstairs. Oh my gosh. Um, this, is, this, is the, this is so good. It's Especially, to die for. You know, and it it reminds him of his childhood. I know. Isn't that nice? You remember those cheese pizzas we had when we were, when we were kids, you know, like at the cafeteria? But Trader Joe's is taking it to a whole new level. You know, I want to actually have some white wine with this right here, but do I need to clear this out, this red wine first? Well, before? what you normally do is okay drink that and then put a, a one a, a tiny tiny sip of the white swish it around drink that that's your kind of cleanse cleanse cleansing okay cleansing. so we're cleansing and then you drink the white okay. you know and know that this is a weird one and then now now drink white okay now we drink white so that's how we cleanse the glass yeah so this again is the milano um i'm sorry the muscat right this is the muscat the milano cellars um, muscat. And you mentioned before that muscat actually is the oldest, one of the oldest, if not the oldest grapes. The like, oldest grape. Like back to Flint, Fred Flintstone. Fred era. Flintstone. It's a Fred Flintstone it's grape. It's a Fred Flintstone grape. That's, that's good. I like it. Muscat is a Fred Flintstone grape. I'm going to so put we, that on. So your, your tips were we see the wine, so we look at it to make sure there's no the cork. Wine. There's no cork in it. There's no dirty bits in it, right? Well, you're looking at the color. Okay, yours still has pink in it, so you still had some red in it, but that's okay. okay. We'll forget. And it. then we smell it. That's the second tip, right? We smell it. And then it. we swirl it. And then we swirl it, so we get the all the open up the, open the bouquet, and get the aromas and then going. Then we drink it. And then we drink it. Mmm. And we are happy. Okay, Lee, we are way over the time you said we were going to do it. We better move our glasses so it's not in front of our faces. Right there. Also, um, before we go, I wanted to mention Facebook 360. So that actually, as if Facebook Live wasn't um, new enough, uh, Facebook 360, doing 360-degree panorama photos that you can actually click and drag on your Facebook page. It's just, it's how actually... How do you do it? How do you, how do, you do, do it? Okay, so basically, all you have to do is, um, it only works mainly for iPhones right now. Um, if you have an, uh, a panorama mode on your phone, 
then what you can do is you can do uh, like your iPhone for example you can actually do a panoramic picture upload it to your Facebook profile and then after it's been po after you post it to your Facebook profile you your readers can actually click and drag and see everything in 360 right there I understand that they're still working on it for droids you know we Android users always get the short end of the stick I don't know why Facebook but uh, Anyways, um, you don't need a special camera or an... Or Unbelievable. I can't wait to try but I, I'm trying this next. I mean, thank you, Lee, for introducing <coughs> me to Facebook to live video yeah, So I'm going to try it. And so the Facebook 360 actually is a really cool feature because, say, for example, for business, for example, if you've got a restaurant, uh, a hotel, or if you're a realtor... Uh, a real estate agent, you can do a Facebook 360 right there within the building, and then you allow you bring people in, in like with Facebook Live, you bring them into the actual experience where they can actually um, click and drag and feel as if they're a part of experience without being there. That's the cool thing about all of these virtual reality type of posts that are coming out through Facebook. That is so dang cool. So with Facebook 360, you don't need a special camera to do it, um, although it helps because you get more high quality. But right now, at least on the iPhone, you can do a 36, Facebook 360. All you have to do is you know take a 360 panorama photo and then upload it through your iPhone. Like for example, we have an old iPhone 5 at home and thankfully I can try it on that phone. I, have, I mean, I'm filming out of, we're filming out of a droid right here. But, um, and I've tried it. It's actually, it's, it's really, Really cool. Okay, you know? I'm gonna try Backyard that. parties with wine, for example. If you want to do a 360 of everybody, you know, cheering to summer wine right there, and then upload it to your Facebook page, and that way you everybody you can get the whole 360 of it. That's that's a really cool idea. But there's a lot of there's a lot of implementations I can see for Facebook 360 coming out. So, and that being said, um, I forgot to tell you my special announcement. What? Listen, I'm so excited about this, and you already you kind of you, I gave you a hint about this. So at um, Starting this August, I think it's going to happen this August, I'm very excited to announce that for the very first time, uh, I'm going to be going where my social media person has never gone before. I'm actually going to be doing a live talk show on Facebook. I'm so oh, yeah! excited about That's it. That's incredible! That's amazing! Congratulations! That's... that's how much of the how much is the wine talking? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, thank you, thank you. Though, no, I'm so excited about this. So, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live talk show on a uh, weekly talk show here on Facebook, starting probably about the beginning of August. Uh, I'm still working out the name for it. I think I'm going to call it like Social Today or BizBuzz or something like that. Um, but every week we're going to be interviewing business owners from around the Bay Area, both current business owners and new business owners, and we're going to be talking about. Um, what the, what their business is about, especially their new business, as well as how they use social media to actually promote their business. So this is more of kind of like a, it's a very good talk show, not just for you know your casual consumer, but also for your business owners who want to learn effective techniques about how other business owners are using social media to you know advertise and promote their business. That's awesome. So um, I can't wait. You know, we're we're writing up the scripts and we're also taking we're also taking uh, you know interviewees. So I'm. Definitely assuming you're coming back to be on the show. I will be back. I'll be back. You'll be back, right there. So I can't, I can't wait to that. So that's that's probably my most exciting news right there. Yay! But in the meantime, um, if you'd like to learn more about my social media coaching services, my consulting. Um, as well as my ghostwriting and, and tips just basically about using social media for your business, uh, come and check out my recently new website. It's actually at my name, Um I released that one not too long ago. I, I haven't seen it. I can't oh, wait to see come. it. You should I go see, see it. it. I have, a, have a glass of wine. I will there. see it. I will see it. Um, LeeLonitz.com. And you can sign up for um, my newsletter if you'd like to get free social media tips to help you with your Facebook Live videos, your Facebook 360s, um, Instagram tips, and even more. And then if people want to learn more about where to get these delicious wines as well as what you know other wines they might be able to pair for their summer backyard uh, patio parties, where how can they reach you? So uh, my best website is Betty's Wine Music. Musings.com. Betty's Wine Musings.com. Betty's Wine Musings. And, yeah, and you .com. can get all my information from there, and I hope to connect with you soon. Definitely. I, you know, um, wine parties. Think wine parties this summer, because who doesn't love a wine party on a bar, a wine party on a backyard patio? I've actually had five, I think. Five of your parties so far. 
Although they were indoor, actually. We've never done backyard yeah, patio but, party yet. But backyard is phenomenal. So so let's do one. And how about on a boat? That's phenomenal, too. Let's do one. We should we should do one on a boat yeah. right, right yeah. there. If, if, one, if one of you can come up with a boat, we will happily do oh. a tasting on you know, a and, and And, you know, I will match her pledge right there <laughs> with a free social media talk. If you have a yacht, a catamaran, a cruise ship that you love for Betty to actually give a wine tasting, I will be there guaranteed and do a free social media talk. I don't care if you got a thousand or five thousand there. You know, I'll probably need some wine actually. I got five thousand eyes, pairs of eyes staring at me. But anyways. <laughs> that is adorable. Okay, is it time to sign off? I think it's about time to sign off. You know, so, um, Thank you very much for joining us here on our first joint Facebook Live video. It was wonderful having all you awesome people right there. Um, and stay tuned. We will be doing another video very soon. So have a wonderful Thursday and a rest, uh, an awesome rest of the week. And, um, and uh, oh, okay, what can I I am giving the Queen's wave goodbye. She's giving the Queen's goodbye. wave right there because um, all of you are royal. Yeah, cheer, cheers to all of you. Cheers. Right there. We got we to gotta cheers off. All right, right. Take Bye. care. Bye.